Today on In the Know, the challenge of completing the last mile. We talked to a number of experts on how they're fulfilling new customer demands for on-time, fast, and easy delivery. Here's what they had to say. The challenges in the retail world to provide customers quick delivery of the items they're looking for uh, are, are really twofold. I think first is building the capability to provide a good user experience on the front end to purchase items on their phones and other mobile devices, which many retailers have excellent experiences on, and some are still building. And the challenge there is not just building that capability, but ensuring that you are visible, not just in your own application, but many others, so customers can find you. The other challenge is building that network out to provide that fast delivery. Many companies over the years have built excellent e-commerce warehouses across the country where they were able to provide two, three, or four day delivery to the entire country. Now they're focused on improving that speed of delivery, often leveraging the stores they often have down the street from customers. So you're taking a facility that was designed for foot traffic customers at one time, and now also using that network and that inventory to get that material to the customer's doorstep. Part of those challenges include understanding urban congestion, understanding the implications of that last mile and how it affects their operations. So if a customer ordered an item and they're expecting it to come within 3 to 6 in the afternoon, per se, when something happens, it could be bad weather, it could be a flat tire for the, for the truck, the suppliers need to understand that. I need to communicate it back to the consumers so the consumers are not in the dark. I think there are still tremendous challenges for retailers, both large and small, conquering the last mile. I think, uh, you know, especially with items that are large or big and bulky, like a refrigerator uh, or a, you know, a bathtub or tractor, people want to buy these things online now. But actually getting those to the home is incredibly difficult. And getting them at a quality of service level across the United States to any zip code is also very difficult. The retailers have very complicated networks of carriers that they need to leverage in order to provide that level of service. Um, and to keep the service consistent and high quality is incredibly difficult. So chaos of, of technology convergence. You have um, systems that are now getting archaic. You have companies that are coming to the realization that the speed of you know, juggernauts like Amazon and Uber are creating these ripple effects. And what's happening is every company in that chain, value chain, is having to respond and retailers aren't waiting. So as the retailers start to see shrinkage in revenues, you have smaller companies starting to get into the act with technologies and then larger companies having to switch and say, is my technology that's in-house really as powerful as I need it to be, as quick as I need it to be. So we're seeing the shift that's happening and there's two trends that come out very clearly. People are throwing money at technologies without understanding it. And the second trend is people are throwing money at certain verticals without understanding them. And so we see opportunities that will become ripe for those companies that have invested a little bit of time and know how to see exactly what value add they provide. They can't be all things to all people. The state of last mile delivery uh, in the US I still think is emerging in terms of what services customers truly want. Uh, if you listen to anyone in the industry talk now, they talk about customer expectations changing. You know, what's the speed of delivery people expect now? Well, obviously it's faster than it used to be. Well, how fast do they truly expect something to be delivered without a surcharge? And what are they willing to pay a surcharge for? And if you look in the industry right now, I do think folks feel uh, it's appropriate to pay a surcharge for a hot meal that's delivered to your home. You know, please pick up that item and bring it to my house. And there's an expectation that often restaurants or, or food delivery uh, uh, services, many of whom are in some of the conferences I've been at, uh, take on a charge and be, make that very transparent. There's other types of last mile delivery uh, where folks uh, expect 
the fast delivery same day or overnight, for example, to be very customized, very transparent, but also be included in the cost of the purchase. Whether that's a large bulk purchase from great warehouse, uh, warehouse, comp uh, warehouse uh, stores across the country, uh, or a maybe electronics purchase where the customer has spent a larger amount of money and they expect that fast delivery to be included in that cost. So customer expectations today, uh, when it comes to last mile fulfillment, have been pretty much set by the Ubers and Amazons alike. Uh, they dictated the, the rules of the game. There's a new standard. Customers no longer want to be waiting in the dark unknowingly when their service provider or package is going to arrive. Customers are not going to accept anymore sitting you know, between 12 and 5 waiting for a service unknowingly if that service is going to arrive and having their entire day ruined just for purchasing something and, uh, and waiting for it to come. Uh, so we're seeing that in the last mile today that really impacts the way organizations deliver and do business. Lothis is really starting on a very steep uh, incline in terms of its popularity and its acceptance, uh, changing consumer behavior, etc. The only thing that I can see that might slow that rapid rate of growth down, some people have been talking about drones, Quite frankly, I can't see how drones could work. There's so many different problems. And after all, you still have to be home to accept the goods. And the beauty of the lot is, is you don't have to be home. You collect it when you want to, from wherever you want to. So it's absolute convenience. So quite frankly, I might have rose-colored sunglasses on, but I can't see anything slowing our growth down. So the disruption in the last mile is, has many choices. You can have a delivery to the home. You can have a click and collect option. You can have a like click, uh, buy online and click up, uh, pick up in the store. Um, you can have a logger solutions, you can have many different choices. The last mile delivery is, is a process that has been around for as long as we've been doing delivery. Uh, but at this point, we're starting to integrate new technologies in it, so you see things like uh, companies like Uber are actually doing an on-demand uh, type of atmosphere, and then as well as a, just a number of automated services, automated systems that are starting to tie into kind of the existing nature and the existing processes that have already been in place, and sort of make them more streamlined, uh, more cost-effective, things like that. Delivery to the doorstep is a phrase that I think really means improving my, the convenience of my day. Oftentimes that's delivering something to my home, but it also can mean consolidating my errands into one location, whether that's a delivery locker, whether that's curbside pickup, as you see many, com uh, many retailers doing, partnering with technology companies. So I think in, in when we use the term you know, delivery to my doorstep and home delivery, we need to make sure we encompass all of the other innovative aspects about improving uh, the amount of time or increasing the amount of time I get to spend home and reducing the amount of time I spend aggregating the things I need. So that last mile delivery today provides a lot of options to consumers and to suppliers. From the consumer's point of view, you can have the service delivered by next day, maybe even same day delivery, and maybe even a couple of days. And they're provided with options that, that are you know, given to them by their, by their retailers. Now, from the retailer's perspective, they're given also several options, either using their own fleet of drivers, uh, using crowdsourced uh, for drivers, or maybe using different couriers to provide these, these options. And for the, for, the, for the suppliers, what's important to maintain that, that service level that they promise to their customers for those different uh, types of, of delivery options. And again, that, that model of, of elastic delivery really comes into play. Uh, whether it's in uh, malls or retail areas where you have people going to pick up a certain amount of their, uh, going to pick up groceries and they have an, also a locker of another retailer that delivered an item there, or whether it's consolidating um, retail orders and pickups by certain companies that can bring them all to one location and you pick them all up in one spot. As well as, you know, let's, let's not forget some of the great technologies coming out where we'll see how they play, whether it's drones or some of the robots that are delivering in people's neighborhoods in the near future. So we're seeing service providers uh, actually providing more visibility into their operations, uh, providing customers the opportunity to have a voice, uh, to comment on the experience, uh, to communicate not only with the dispatchers, but also with their drivers, and really get engaged and feel unique, feel part of that experience. And, and we're seeing a lot of customers out there, a lot of, uh, sorry, uh, providers, uh, meeting those consumers uh, and engaging them really from the entire supply chain point of view. Yeah, I think there are, there are a tremendous number of a tremendous amount of innovation that's happening in this space in the last mile, and uh, you know, 
drones, lockers, these sort of things are interesting, but from my perspective, the innovation is going to happen more on your mobile device than anywhere else. As a consumer, that is your epicenter of everything that you do today, and that's the device that you want to be able to use to get information, to be able to make changes, uh, et cetera. And so, while I think there'll be many, many interesting, innovative stuff uh, coming down the pike, all of it's going to be controlled through your phone, and the customer, consumer, is going to expect that the phone allows them to do whatever they want to do. And so if it's, you know, they want to schedule that delivery or they want to, uh, you know, get the, get the drone to come to this place versus that place, it's all going to happen through their mobile device. Well, at the moment, it's still drone. However, we've got a lot of clients around the world who are placing them outside their car and spritz and mortar stores to increase their, their trading hours to effectively 24 seven. But they're also found in large residential uh, um, apartments, in car parks, universities, subway stations. It, it's unlimited really. We've been placing our e-commerce lockers around the world for around about six years now. Placed outdoors and indoors, they've been able to get through very harsh summers and very severe winters in areas such as um, the Americas. So Canada has really embraced our lockers enormously. Um, USA is just starting off. South America, they've already been placed down there. But particularly through Asia, Australia, we've had them around about um, six years now and throughout parts of Asia. So Click and Collect is working in a way that you go and shop on our website and uh, it's distributed to a collection point. And at the collection point, you simply come at your own choice and pick up the products you have purchased. Well, in terms of geographies, I would say like our focus in the beginning was suburban areas and now we focus on urban areas. Um, the biggest challenge is urban areas for everybody, like the retailers that bring into a condo tower. Do they have concierge who can receive the stuff? And also for consumers, how do they take delivery when you live in an urban area? So we are focusing a lot on urban areas right now, making high street um, collection points for people and even into uh, office towers and condo towers where we make uh, click and collect points. I think the future of locker technology is that it, it will bring so many different communities together, whether it be the transport arms, the postal offices, the retailers, a little bit like ATMs, automatic teller machines. So automatic teller machines, you may remember, they started off as islands. Each bank had their own system, and that was very frustrating for consumers where they had to, to pay extra to take money out from a different bank and so forth. However, I see that the future of lockers bringing all of those communities together with one central system. So robots are kind of all the talk right now um, in a number of fields, but especially last mile of delivery, because um, the last mile of delivery is about 60% of the cost of the total delivery uh, for any sort of product you, product you get. So whether or not that be packages, uh, groceries, things like that. So robots allow that entire process to be brought down to a cost that is actually achievable by the consumer, um, something that people are interested in paying, something people are more readily uh, you know, uh, prepared to actually uh, move forward with. I mean, I see a wave of innovation that's going to go on for years and years. So I think it, it's not going to, There, I don't predict that there will be discontinuous change in terms of you know, one day we wake up and everything's different. But I think when you look back across five or even 10 years, things are going to look very different, you know, back in time, if you will. And so uh, I think it's just going to be a slow and steady evolution where, you know, new stuff is coming out on almost a monthly basis, and then in five years we'll realize that a revolution has occurred. It might look as a radical change uh, that's coming, but eventually it will become the standard. As it is today, you're expecting visibility into the process. It's a standard. If you're not providing that kind of a service today, you're already behind. So there you have it. Expert comment on completing the last mile. Now you're in the know.